back to my channel. My name is Whitney Holcomb. I am a model, writer, and author of the book, One Year 100 Pounds. I lost 100 pounds at 14 on my own. And now I give weight loss and motivational tips and advice on my YouTube channel and on my blog. So today's topic is about whether or not I blame my parents for me being an obese child um, and whether or not they tried to intervene. And if they didn't intervene, well, why not? So I'm going to talk about that. I am also going to talk about how to talk to your own child uh, about their weight problem if you also happen to be a parent of an obese or overweight child. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, do I blame my parents for me being an obese child? Uh, in short, yes, I do. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let me just first start by saying that Kids are kids. As children, we have no control over what goes on in our household. That's up to our parents. Our parents control everything that goes on in our household, including what we eat and how much we eat. Kids don't understand the concept of health and fitness. They don't know what calories are or whether or why you should not eat so many of them. Uh, they don't understand the difference between good and bad foods. And it makes sense. They're kids. They shouldn't have to think about that stuff. That is the parent's responsibility to make sure that their children are healthy. Now, I understand it's a little more complicated than that. Yes, parents are supposed to be responsible for what you're eating and how much you're eating, but that doesn't mean that they can be there all the time. They can't stop their child from sneaking food every single time when they're not looking, nor can they control what their kids are eating when they're not with them. I also understand that it can be difficult to watch what your kids are eating when you have several other kids to take care of uh, or something else going on. Um, you know, I understand that these are all very valid reasons, but at the end of the day, it is still your responsibility as a parent to ensure that your children uh, have instilled within them healthy eating habits. So in my case, or in my parents' case, it's not that they were intentionally negligent. They were just misinformed. My parents grew up in the 60s when health and fitness wasn't as such a big industry as it is today. The concept of dieting and exercising to lose weight wasn't really a thing. Most people didn't, like my parents, didn't have to think about their weight because most people were at a normal weight. And this is in large part due to the difference of lifestyles back then. Um, if you think about it, back in the 60s, that was really before the big boom in fast food consumerism and, you know, again, portion sizes were much smaller, people led more active lifestyles. So most people were thin. Most people were thin or normal weight. Fast forward 30 years later when my parents became, well, parents, and the world has vastly changed. Uh, lifestyles are different. Portion sizes are different. People just don't cook at home like they used to. Um, fast food is rampant and, you know, a, a main staple in almost every household. And now we have Costco where we could go and buy gallon sizes of ice cream and Cheez-Its and potato chips. It was just a lot different as far as how people ate and how they uh, approached their lifestyles in general. So growing up, my parents didn't really instill in me or my sisters any kind of healthy habits uh, as far as you know, working out regularly or you know, having a particular, particularly healthy diet because they just didn't do that themselves. Um, my mom also did not like to cook, so we ate a lot of fast food at home and we ate a lot of processed foods, you know, things that were just kind of easy to make on the go, which are generally foods that are high in calorie or not super nutritionally dense. Um, you know, again, junk food, things that are very easy to gain weight from. We also didn't lead a very active lifestyle. As far as, you know, my parents didn't really encourage us to exercise. Um, I mean, we pretty much just, you know, we could play and do whatever we wanted to, but most of the time that was, you know, playing video games, at least for me, playing video games and reading. I think most importantly though, or most significantly, um, we didn't have any kind of restrictions on snacking or how much we could eat or when we could eat. The kitchen was always open. So I remember from a very young age, going into the kitchen and getting whatever I wanted, however much I wanted, uh, even when I wasn't hungry. And you know, why shouldn't I? Um, I was a kid. I didn't know about healthy eating. I didn't understand that eating too many calories made you fat. Um, what I did know was that 
food tasted really good. And so I wanted more of it. And as a kid, you know, why not? Again, if you have no restrictions placed on you, that's what you're gonna do. So this is where I really believe my parents should have intervened, or rather this is where I think they went wrong. You know, I think when they saw that I was gaining weight, it should have been pretty obvious to them why. Um, and, but you know, I, when I asked them, you know, nowadays, why, why didn't they intervene? Why didn't they do anything? Um, I think it's just a, it, it's kind of complicated. I think maybe, you know, they, they didn't really know how to intervene, um, or they didn't really realize how much I was eating. Um, again, my parents are great people. Uh, it did not come from negligence, I don't think, but more rather just not knowing what to do and being very misinformed themselves. So when I say that I blame my parents, um, I blame them in that, yes, it was their fault, but I don't necessarily hold a grudge against them, if that makes sense. I don't, you know, it's not, it's not festering in my mind. I don't blame all my problems on other people. Um, but in this case, because I was a child and well, any child, especially a young child, um, you know, your parents, the parents are the respons are res responsible ones. They are responsible for you. But just a little backstory on my family now. Um, so I was not the only person in my family with a weight problem. Uh, my mom and my oldest sister also had a weight problem. My mom was always thin growing up as a child and adult, um, but then after having four kids and different lifestyle change, um, you know, she was heavier. And my oldest sister was also heavier, uh, though never, never quite as heavy as me as a child. My dad, on the other hand, has always remained rather slim. Um, so even though he, he loves junk food and he's a big perpetrator of bringing a lot of the junk food in the house, but he always remained pretty slim. Um, and then my other two sisters, uh, one, a little bit older and then the youngest sister uh they were always very thin and so coincidentally uh, the two brunettes in the family me and my oldest sister took after my mom and then the two blondes in the family took after my father who was blonde so we took after them both in just you know coloring and also in body type but this is something i want to address really quick because i just think it's important um you know, so like I just said, there were, there is my mother who was also heavier and then my father who was not heavy. And then you had me and my oldest sister who were heavier, took after my mom. And then my other two sisters took after my father who was thinner. But why the difference in body types if we all ate the same foods? Well, the difference is that me and my oldest sister and my mom, we ate more and my my father and my other two sisters, they are the kind of people where they can eat what they want and when they're full, they'll stop. They just have little interest in food, especially my youngest sister. And I am not like that. Um, I am someone where I'm eating something that tastes good, I just wanna keep eating it. Um, and I'm sure many people can relate to this because it is a very common problem. Uh, again, according to the CDC, about half of our population is overbeast is overweight or obese. I said overbeast. Um, and I think a big part of this is because we have the two types of people and the one type probably have a less addictive mindset and they can eat their fill and then be done with it. And then you have the other type like me, uh, who I, I don't want to stop eating. Um, especially when you're eating foods that are literally engineered to be addicting, which is the junk food, right? It's the combination of salt, fat, and sugar. It, keeps your mind addicted and you just want to keep eating. So, you know, I, I, I feel like I need to point this out because it, it bothers me a lot when I see people using genetics as a, an excuse to be fat. Um, genetics is not the reason why you're fat. The reason why you're fat is because you eat too much and you don't exercise enough in most cases. Um, and I feel the need to, like I said, I feel the need to address this because I, you know, I see that a lot of times people will be like, oh, well, you know, she or he can eat whatever they want and they don't get fat. That's true. They may be eating whatever they want, but if they're not getting fat, it's because they're not eating enough of it. Now, genetics can mean you're predispositioned 
uh, for certain behaviors that contribute to being fat. So maybe, you know, having a little bit of a slower metabolism or in most cases, definitely in my case, just having that kind of food addiction mindset where, you know, you don't want to stop eating once you taste something good. Um, because believe it or not, there are people, again, like my mom, or my, I'm sorry, my dad and my other two sisters, where they eat and once they're full, they stop. I know, it's crazy, right? I can't fathom that concept. Anyway, I had to point that out real quick um, because I, I just feel like that's such a the myth of the naturally skinny person. Um, it's really not so natural <laughs> or, I mean, there's no magic involved. No one is genetically predisposition to being able to stay thin no matter how many calories they eat. That's just not possible. But maybe I will do a separate video on that another time. So anyway, back to the topic. So yes, it absolutely was my parents' fault that I was fat. Um, and I do blame them for that. But I also understand because I, you know, I feel like they probably just didn't know how to intervene. Um, and I, because and I think the main reason is because weight is a very sensitive subject. Weight is so closely tied to our, our self image and our self sense of self worthiness. Um, especially if you're a female as a male too, but especially as a, so why, yes, I think they should have stepped in and done something. Um, I also understand that they were afraid of doing or saying the wrong thing. And that's a valid concern because yes, should they have said or done the wrong thing, it could have made things worse. So that brings me to the next portion of this video is should you intervene if you have an obese or overweight child and how do you do it? Because there is definitely a right and a wrong way to do it. First, let me tell you what not to do. So even though my parents never intervened, uh, there were other people who did. And usually this was in the form of rude or insensitive comments, which, spoil alert, does not work. Uh, just don't be mean, it's, it, it doesn't work. It makes things worse. So for example, um, I had a family member who, with all good intentions, I, I understand, I understand that now, um, he said something to me that was very insensitive as a kid, I was maybe, maybe seven or eight, I don't know. I was, I was not quite 10 years old yet. And we were at the mall or somewhere and my other sister was there, one, one of my thinner sisters, and we wanted to get ice cream. So he gave my sister money to go get ice cream and she ran off to go get her vanilla cone or whatever it was she was getting. And I ran after her thinking I was gonna get one too. Um, but he stopped me and uh, before I could go after her. And he said, oh, oh no, you know, none for you. Um, and I said, you know, why not? Like, I don't, why does she get one? And I don't, um, you know, what's the deal? Um, and he just looked at me very sternly and he said, well, because you know, your sister, she doesn't have the same problem as you. You can only imagine how that would feel as a young kid. Um, especially a kid that by this time I was already being, you know, mercilessly bullied in school and ostracized for my weight. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't new at this point, you know, feeling different or feeling, feeling ugly or worthless. I had these feelings all at a very young age. So to hear this coming from a close family member <clears throat> was, it, it, you know, it, it hurt. It was, you know, it, obviously I still remember it to this day. I mean, it was just, not only was it was embarrassing um, because here I was being called out in front of my other sister um, and it was just very you know again I was young I didn't know what to say or do it just felt like oh okay what do you do um, and you know again I, I know he was doing this from a, a, a you know from it, he was doing this out of kindness or he was doing it because he was generally trying to help he was not a bad person but it was just in the way he did it, um, you know, he made it feel as if it was my fault, you know, like I was the problem and it just confirmed everything that I had, that I had, you know, been instilled in school and that there was something wrong with me. Um, and again, mind you, I'm a kid 
and I don't know why I'm fat. I don't, you know, I don't know that calories. I don't know anything about calories. I don't, cause again, I'm a kid. Parents never taught me. I didn't know. All I knew was that people are mean to me and it's just the way I was born. And it's just, you know, it just being, if you've ever been discriminated against, right? It's like just people hating you for who you are, not for what you say, not for what you do, but just for literally being you. Um, it's an awful feeling. And especially back then, you know, and it was something I didn't know I could change. Um, so, you know, I, I can understand that, especially people who are discriminated against for things they can't change. I can only imagine like that. Is, that has to be such a defeating feeling. Um, and it, at the time it was for me, because again, I didn't understand that I could change. Um, and not that people should have been mean to me anyway, regardless of whether you can change. Discrimination is just not cool. Anyway, how do you intervene with a child who is overweight or obese? Um, and I'm especially speaking from the point of if you are the parent. Um, so the first thing you need to understand is that the problem is not them. The problem is not them <laughs> because they are a kid and you are the responsible adult. So the problem is you. You need to take responsibility for your actions and your influences because 99% of the time, a reason why a child is overweight or obese is because of the parents and the lifestyle habits that the parents are instilling on their children. And oftentimes this is pretty obvious, right? Because in many of these cases, when you look at the parents and the siblings and everyone in that family, almost all of them are obese too, right? So you can, you can clearly see that, okay, this is a family, a familial, problem. Um, but not, but not always. There are cases of parents who themselves are fit and healthy, but, or maybe not fit, but are unhealthy, but at least skinny. Um, and, but they have maybe, you know, one child, one or two children who have a weight problem. Um, even in this case, the problem is still you. The problem is the parents. Um, just because you are skinny or other kids in your family are skinny and you all eat the same thing still doesn't mean that you are not the problem. So again, you all can be eating the same exact things. Um, but if you have a child who is heavier or has a weight problem, they are eating more of it. And it is your responsibility to ensure that they are eating enough, not too much, not too little. And again, it's your responsibility to instill healthy habit, but there's a way to address their weight problem without, ostracizing them without calling them out and making them feel different. Um, don't do what my family member did. That doesn't work. It will only make them feel worse. And in some cases it may make them vindictive and they may want to defy you by eating more. So for example, don't make insensitive comments about their weight. Um, you know, don't say things like, Oh, get in tubby there. need to, you know, need to get a little more exercise in. Um, don't, you know, ask them, oh, are you sure you want another helping at dinner? Um, especially if their siblings are, are around and you're not saying the same thing to the siblings. Um, that only makes them feel, you know, again, embarrassed and it makes them feel worse. Um, same thing, you know, don't give them separate meals at dinner. Um, you know, don't do things like, oh, you know, you can't have mac and cheese because you have a problem and you're going to eat the salad. Uh, that's just going to make it feel like punishment for them. And again, it's just, it, it's not the way to go about it. You don't want to single them out. You don't want to make them feel like they did something wrong or that they're the problem. Cause again, they're not the problem. It's you. So what do you do then? Well, you start by changing yourself. And again, this goes for you, even if you are skinny, because again, if you are, even if you're skinny and other people in your family are skinny, but your child is fat, there is something going on in your household that is causing them to be fat. And a lot of times this is diet. So you need to change your lifestyle, not only for your overweight child, but for yourself and for everyone in your family. So whether this means cooking more meals at home, uh, buying or incorporating more whole foods into your diet, like fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, getting rid of all the junk foods and the snacks, the snacks is a big thing. Uh, you know, there's no reason that we all need to be snacking 24 seven. Um, you know, the, it will survive going a couple hours until the next meal. It's not that big a deal. So yeah, get rid of the snacks and the, the crap food. Um, your children can't eat it unless it's, unless you buy it. Right. Also consider making exercise a part of the family routine. 
So start going for a walk every day after dinner. Um, I mean, or, you know, playing pickleball or whatever it is that you and your family like to do. Uh, this just encourages them. Well, it gets them active. It gets them, you know, burning calories. Um, and it also, it helps you guys spend time together. So there are a lot of benefits to that as well. So why is it so important that you make these lifestyle changes, not only for your kids, but for yourself? Uh, the answer is because you lead by example and you are the biggest influence in your child's life right now, no matter how old they are, even if they're in, in their teens, they learn from you and that's your good and your bad habits. So it's unfair of you to, you know, for tell your kids that they need to be doing eating healthy and working out and doing these things when you yourself aren't even doing it. You're just going to look like a hypocrite. Um, you know, they're not going to take you seriously, but also most importantly, it, you're not ostracizing that one child who happens to be overweight, but most importantly, getting healthy together as a family. I mean, one, it just, it helps create a family bond. Um, but two, it's, you are addressing your child's weight problem without singling them out. And you would know, you know, you're not saying that they're the problem. You're just saying, you know what, we're all going to get healthy. We're all going to do this together. So it's, it's a more of a supportive, a more of a supportive environment for your overweight child. Um, they're going to learn to do it the healthy way instead of doing it from a place of what feels like punishment. So if you want to help your overweight or obese child, then you need to make changes for yourself and the whole family. And you know what, it's going to benefit your overweight child, but more importantly, it's, it's going to benefit all of you. There is nothing wrong or bad about wanting to be healthier, even if you're skinny. And now I know that some people will say like, oh, well, that's not fair, you know, to my other kids or to myself, we're not fat. So why should we deprive ourselves? Or, you know, I don't want to deprive my other kids. Um, you know, and my, I, I just always find this kind of mentality interesting because I think, you know, deprive them of what? Deprive them of junk food and crap food that is clogging their arteries, um, that's slowing down their metabolism. Um, I, I mean, really deprive them of what? <laughs> like no one needs to be eating a tub of ice cream every night or snacking on, you know, flavored Cheetos. I mean, that's literally like corn powder or corn meal and like cheese flavoring. It's not even real cheese. And just because your other kids and yourself, you may be skinny, um, that doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy or that you will, will or that you will remain that way. Um, because if your kids don't have these healthy habits instilled in them now, many of them gain weight um, and have health problems later on. So, so yeah, I mean, depriving your kids of what an unhealthy lifestyle. Um, and I think this mentality comes from thinking that health and fitness is a punishment. And I, you know, again, I find that wild, uh, you know, look, maybe I wouldn't have found it wild back in the day when I was fat. Um, but I definitely do now because I, I know so well the benefits of a healthy lifestyle, what it does for you. I mean, in so many, so many different aspects of your life. Um, but really it's, it's a punishment to feed your kids what healthy whole grains and fresh vegetables and fruits. Uh, there are so many people around the world in this country, even that don't even have access to fresh foods or good foods like that. Um, so, you know, if you're in the position that you can provide that stuff to your, your family, that's a privilege. Um, you know, and, and it's not to say that you need to go totally granola and you won't allow your kids to ever eat, you know, I don't know, a, a gram of sugar. Um, no, I mean, you can still enjoy your treats. Uh, that's definitely part of a healthy lifestyle. Um, it just means that you're not going to be doing it all the time. It, it just means that you're not going to go to Costco and buy gallon sizes of Cheez-Its or, you know, cheese puffs or whatever, whatever it is, it is you guys like to eat. Um, that's all. It just means that you're overall, you guys are going to be healthier. And again, this is helpful for, for anyone, um, whether you're skinny or not. So to sum it all up, Yes, you should intervene if your child has a weight problem, but you should do it in the right way. Lead by example. Um, examine your own household and your own lifestyle and determine what changes need to be made for the, you know, your child's best interest and your family's interest as a whole. Of course, I feel like I must say that these are just my opinions. 
Obviously, I do not know you or your family or what your situation is. Um, so, you know, take everything you hear on the internet with a grain of salt. But that is my opinion from the perspective of a formerly obese child. And that is what I think would work best. That is how I would approach the situation if I ever had an overweight or obese child. So if my advice doesn't work for you, then just don't follow it. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, um, and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, have you had ever had experience as an overweight or obese child? Um, did you have similar experiences to mine? Did your parents intervene in the right or wrong way? Um, I'd love to hear it. So let me know and until next time. Mm -hmm.